Hello and welcome to another video. Thanks for watching. Um, so I've wanted to put this video together um, to talk about motor skill development in children. Um, in tennis in particular, but it can definitely be transferred into other sports. So, you know, if you're working in football, if you're working in rugby, hopefully some of these concepts will help you too. Um, I'm going to be talking about motor skill development rather than working on different techniques and different shapes of swings. Um, because it's hugely important in developing well-rounded and robust tennis players that will be able to, to last the test of time, you know, that we will be able to, to compete and, and perform under pressure, you know, it will, it will help them to be, uh, have longevity in their tennis careers or in any other sporting careers, um, because they have solid foundations. Now, hopefully this video will be useful to you if you're a coach, give you some ideas as to how you can slightly adapt maybe the way that you're working or, or um, it might just consolidate some of the ideas that you were already thinking. But also it will definitely help parents to, to have some ideas and a better understanding as to how they can help their children to progress in sport, whether it be at home or, or you know, in the sporting or you know, on a tennis court or on a football pitch and that sort of thing. So first of all, you're going to want to talk about why uh, motor skill development um, rather than technique and shapes. Um, recently went on the LTA youth course and um, really scary uh, stat that I saw um, on one of the slides and I'll share it with you. Now, the UK population of, of children over the last five years have declined in their levels of physical literacy. Um, so we're looking at the average child in the country, so we're not looking at um, tennis in particular, but children in general. Um, their balance skills have dropped by 6.2% in the last five years, and their aiming and catching skills have dropped by 19.7%. Now, that's huge, almost 20% decrease in levels of ability to aim and catch. So for tennis players, it's one of the key skills. Being able to, to receive and send a ball um, is a huge part of the game. So if the population as a whole has decreased by 20%, there's lots of work that we need to do um, when we get them on the tennis courts. So as tennis coaches, our role is obviously to develop the, the rounded athlete not just the techniques, but everything that encompasses being a tennis player. Physical, mental, ta tactical, technical, um, all of those things are hugely important. Um, so obviously motor skills um, is going to be a good place to start. Um, I'll use this analogy. If you were a builder um, and you were to build a house, you wouldn't build a house without putting foundations down first. If you did, that house would soon fall to pieces under any pressure, you know, whether it came from a storm or, or just pressure of time itself. Um, eventually that house would fall down. And it's the same in developing children in sports. Um, if us coaches got one of these children, they came to the tennis courts without the ability to receive a ball and send a ball, without the ability to balance on one leg, um, if we just go straight into teaching forehand and backhand technique, they may look really good initially. You know, it might be a quick win in, in making them look like good tennis players, mini pros with really good shapes and those sort of things. But if you haven't um, put in the fundamentals beforehand, if you haven't put in those solid foundations, eventually that player will fail. Whether it be on the match court, when they start to feel pressure, their technique will break down. Whether it's because they've been put on the run and they're not used to being in that situation. If they've only trained fixed movements, they'll look great from here. But any time they have to move into a difficult situation, they'll break down. They'll also be more likely to get injured because they haven't got that physical backing of that foundation that we put in the start. So hugely important. And as coaches, it's our role to make sure that all of these things are put in place. But also, as parents, you've got a huge opportunity to, to help in your child's progression, whether it be at home um, or if you take them to the tennis course or the football pitch or whatever. If, if you can really help to develop the, the key motor skills and the fundamentals, then actually teaching the technique is going to be a doddle. If a child can receive a ball on the move, catch it and throw it back, you put a racket in their hand and they're easily going to be able to hit a forehand on the run. So 
hopefully this video will kind of give you some better ideas as coaches and parents as to what you can do to really benefit your child's progression. So a quick question for you. How many professional tennis players do you know that have the same technique? If all of these professional tennis coaches out there were teaching technique and shapes of swings 24-7, then every single tennis player would look the same. So it just goes to show that actually technique is not the number one priority. Being effective is. So, things to think about now. When we're developing our players, whether we're a tennis coach, whether we're a parent trying to help our child to progress, the order in which we should be thinking about developing our players, motor skills, skills for tennis, tennis skills. That's the way that we progress them. Focus on the motor skills first. Okay, Can the child perform key motor skills? Are they able to balance? Are they able to change direction effectively? Are they able to read an oncoming ball? Are they, be able, are they able to send it back? All of these basic things are the keys first of all. So, you know, if you're a parent, you could be playing tag at home. A simple game of tag is going to help your child to develop very good agility. They're going to be able to react quickly. And actually, they're not going to know it because they're going to be having so much fun. It's the best way to learn. If the child has to think about something that you've asked them to do, it's going to be a lot tougher for them to develop the skill. But if you set up a drill or a game that will put that child into the situation that they need to be in, they're far more likely to remember it because they've had fun. Thinking about it in a tennis perspective, let's take a tennis ball for example. So developing a motor skill with a tennis ball could be you roll the ball to the child, they catch it and they roll it back. As simple as that. Okay, now the next progression to that, if that's too easy, you can then roll the ball from side to side. So the child is now moving laterally and trying to track the ball, stop the ball, roll it back, track the ball, stop the ball, roll it back. Again, if that's too easy and they're finding that very easy and, and you know no, no pressure at all, then you can introduce a bounce potentially. So can the child catch an oncoming ball after a bounce? mix up the heights of the bounce, can you do a high catch, a low catch, a medium catch, then add the width into it again. Can they catch out wide in the middle? Can they catch out wide up high? Can they catch out wide down low? So you can start to see how a very simple game of rolling the ball back and forth can be progressed to make it tougher and tougher. So that's motor skill development. Now how do we develop that into a skill for tennis? And quite simply, we do it by adding a racket into the hand. So can a child now receive a ball on the floor with a racket, stop the ball with a racket, roll it back, move out to the side, stop the ball with a racket, roll it back. Can they now do it with a bounce? Catch between the hand and the racket, drop and hit it back. Again, out wide, up high, down low, all of these different areas. So we're developing skills for tennis. If it were football skills, you can develop it into an, a football game. Finally, tennis skills. So at this stage, this is the final stage, this is when you can start to look at technique if you need to. Hopefully though, if we've done a good enough job in developing the motor skills and in developing the skills for tennis, actually by the time we start to look at tennis skills in, in uh, particular, all of that work should have been done. Our kids, when they get a racket in their hand, will be ready because that's what they learned from catching the ball. They need to be ready to be able to move and catch. They will already be in an athletic position. They will already have a dynamic first step because when they were playing tag in the garden, when they were playing that game where you were throwing and catching out wide into the high positions, they had to do an explosive first step to get there. We didn't tell them. We didn't teach them. They've learnt it through experimenting. So now they've got a racket in their hand. It's very simple. We just need to add the final details. Okay, and Hopefully, like I say, there won't be too much work to do at this stage. But sometimes you may need to tweak a grip slightly, you may need to try to um, increase the amount of rotation they get, but if we can do it through the drills beforehand, hopefully it's going to be easier for them to learn that muscle memory without it having to be in here. It's in their body. Hopefully that was a useful video for you. Um, you know, there's plenty more I could talk about, I could go on for hours, but um, that gives you a, a 
a hopefully good idea as to how motor skill development can really help to, to develop robust and well-rounded athletes um, and help them to have longevity for the future. They'll be able to you know, hit that forehand on the run when they're playing you know, in a, in a three-set match in the, in the last set. They'll be less injury-prone because they'll be athletic, they'll have all of the muscles you know, strong enough and um, flexible enough to be able to do the moves. So um, yeah, if you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll see you back here again soon. Take care.